Hi, I'm Tyler Trahan. I'm here in Montreal, Quebec for the Wheel Rail Interaction Conference. I'm with Trains Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I'm Josh Richtartzik with Advanced Rail Management. And today we're going to show you guys how we were able to simulate how wheels roll up and down on a track. So right here we've got this track that we've built. It's about 20 feet long and you know we just picked up some stuff from the hardware store. Very simple just to really give a good baseline, a good very simple demonstration on how wheels on the track work for the train. So it looks like it's, it's a curved track. That's right, yeah we have but it set up as a curve right now. Can mm -hmm. you move it and make it a straight track too? That we can, yeah. The straight track would just go all the way down this wood here and the curved track stays on these plastic tubes here we have. So, Well, we've got a track. Mm -hmm. We need something else. That's right. We need the How wheels. How about wheels? Yeah. So the first wheel we have here you're going to see is our cylindrical wheel. And it's cylindrical because when you look at it from this side, it's flat like a car tire. There's no angle. There's nothing to it. A very simple wheel. You've got the flange though. That's right. This is called the flange. This is a little bit on the inside of the wheel to help keep it from falling off. Just this little orange bit right here. Then secondly, we have this wheel here, which is a little bit different as you can see. Not too many car tires like this. This is a very angled wheel, so this is going to behave much differently on the track than the flat wheel. This wheel here is kind of a custom wheel, so this is very similar to how wheels are on trains. You can see that the angle is kind of like the light green one, but it's not as steep. It's a little more mild. It's kind of a happy place in between the yellow wheel and the green wheel. And it kind of, it's, it's, uh, it's the same angle up until here, and then it gets a little bit steeper and steeper. And this is the last wheel we have. So this is kind of to show if you had a train wheel that's been going for a very long time and it's starting to wear out. The wheels are typically made of steel, so they wear away a little bit. It's gotten hollow on the inside where the rail meets the wheel. It also has a very tall flange bit here. Remember the flange, the orange part on the yellow wheel? This has gotten a lot taller because the wheel has gotten smaller and smaller as it travels down the rail. Shall we test some of these wheels? I think so. Let's start out with the, uh, the cylinder wheel. All right. So this is like the car tire wheel, yeah. if you remember. All right. Let's see if this works. So I'm lining it up, centered on the track. It's not crooked. And gravity is just going to take it down the hill. Here it comes. Yep. And we are on the ground. No good. So this wheel, it's like a car tire. Um, it's flat. As it comes down the rail, it stays the same level. There's no angle difference. And it needs a bit of angle difference to come around the curve without falling off like this. The way uh, trains steer around curves is they kind of go up at an angle. That's right. If you look at how we have the wheel right now, Tyler's holding it in a way that here it's a very small circle if you were going to look here, much smaller than on this side. And the different size circles cause this to be angled, which kind of helps it go around the curve quite nicely. And that's because on a curve the outside rail is longer than mm -hmm. the inside rail. So that, that outside wheel has to travel further than the inside wheel and this larger, um, larger diameter of the outside wheel um, allows it to roll further on that outside rail for the same number of revolutions. Yep. Should exactly. we try this one? I think so, yeah. Now this one is, uh, it's, it's very exaggerated mm -hmm. from a real train wheel, so let's see if it works. All right, so, so that was much better than the first wheel. It didn't fall off or derail, um, but if you saw as it came down, it was kind of going back and forth. It didn't really find a nice happy spot coming down the rail. It was a bit unstable, as we would call it. 
So, you think we can do any better than this? I think we should try the one that's a compromise. All right, let's give it a shot. This one, it's not nearly as angled, um, but it's still it's got more of an angle than than the pure cylinder. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a little more gradual, a little softer angle. So. Maybe if we combine the best features of the car tire type flat wheel and the very exaggerated wheel that we just saw, we'll be able to come up with something that works really well on the track. Plus, this one looks like a real train wheel, so we can kind of cheat. Yeah. We know the, the other ones, the real ones work. Well, that looks a lot more stable to me. Oh, yeah. And there we go. So as you saw, as this wheel rolled down the track, it wasn't flat like the flat tire, and it wasn't going back and forth like the light green wheel. It was at a slight angle all the way down in a very happy spot. So, now What I find interesting about this wheel is it doesn't mm -hmm. have a flange. That's right, yeah. So if you remember the flange from the first wheel, this orange part, this was the only thing keeping this wheel from falling off the track in a matter of seconds. Now, real, real train wheels have flanges, mm -hmm. um, but you don't need them on a mild curve like this. The, the wheels steer themselves around it. Uh, flanges are more helpful if you're going around a sharp curve mm -hmm. or if you're going through a switch where the trains can, can change tracks. How about this one that's really worn? Yep, this is our last wheel set we have here. This one, we're going to see how it behaves coming down the curve. So it's got a lot of properties. It's actually pretty similar to the cylindrical wheel we have here except it's worn out in the center, so it's kind of shaped like that. Kind of like a bowl. Mm -hmm. And the flange on this one is a lot taller, too. So. Because I guess the wheel has worn down the flange. That's right. It hasn't yes. as much. Mm -hmm. Let's give this one a try. Oh, hear so, that grinding noise? Oh, yeah, you see right here, you can see the flange. So That's going to wear out your rail, I bet. That's right. So this, even though it's very similar, much better than the first wheel that came down, it did not fall off. But as this wheel set was rolling down the track, the only thing keeping it from falling off, it wasn't angled like the first couple wheels. It was flat. So the only thing keeping it from falling off was this tall flange. As this rolls down the track, it's going to scrape a lot. And train wheels are, as we said, made of steel, and the rails are steel as well. That steel and steel touching and rubbing is no good. They're going to wear out, and they're going to cause you to have to repair or grind your rail very soon or replace your wheels. And nobody wants to do that. It's very expensive. So, yeah. These well, that's... Um that was a, a great demonstration. That's kind of a lot of what we're talking about um, here at WRI, except uh, maybe a little more understandable than, than a lot of the math we've seen up here. That's right. Yeah, you know, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming, and it's nice to put this all together for everyone to be able to understand what we do here and why it's so important for us. Yeah. All right. Let's see, uh, let's see what we come up with for next year. That's right. Come back in 2018, and we'll show you what we got. All right. We'll see you then.